Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to continue the part um, B of the question number 3. Uh, if you could recall in the previous video, uh, you must watch part A, which tells you basically how to identify customers based on some date criteria. This uh, part is an extension of that uh, where you can see whenever you have to do any sort of difference or comparison operation, uh, you can also achieve it without a loop. Yes, through vector op operations or vector transformations, you can achieve uh, or you can compare a multiple ends of the same information. Let's take up with the example. So it's first the question says find the gap between first and the last orders for every customer. So what that means, you have let's say again coming back to the same example, you have customer one or A. <laughs> These customers would have placed multiple orders. Let's say order A, B, C, D, and E, and these are placed on different dates. So the dates could be uh, something 1, then 20, uh, then 23rd, then, uh, sorry, that's 29th and then 30th. And this could be assumed, different dates we have. Now here, what I want to see, what's the gap? What is the distance or what is the gap between the last date and the first date? In this case, assuming it's same month and same year, the difference is of 29 days right so like that we have to get it for every customer and here remember the goal is to achieve the difference without using loop so understand that let's quickly go through data again um uh, if you remember okay let me sort it and then we'll discuss so sort underscore values on order date, I'm sorting it in ascending order. And um, quickly we'll pick up this example for one of the customers so that it will be easier for us to understand. Uh, let's see for this guy. Okay, so we have, okay, uh, multiple orders. So let's see for this one. So here it goes, df.customer id equal to this one. And there it goes, okay. So now just for this customer, if we see in a specific, uh, the first order was placed on 9, uh, 21st of September. Okay, so this is a bad example. Let's see an example where we have multiple situation occurring. Okay, how about this customer? Let's quickly check that. Yeah, this is a good example. Okay, so if you look carefully, this customer has so many transactions. And um, of course, it's sorted. Every transaction is sorted based on date. And the very first order was placed on 24th January, 2021. But if you see the last order was placed in 9th, uh, 23rd of September 2021. So it's a gap of roughly eight months. Exactly, right? Um, so we need to get this gap. Now you must be wondering what this could be useful for. Uh, well, it can be for various reasons. Uh, mostly these, these sort of informations are in, important for marketing departments for any product. They basically wants to see if we have any such um, customers or any such group. Let's say you have 1,000 customers. And out of thousands, there could be 80% of them who were very much active between a duration right uh, or that duration could represent some campaign or some sales going on some offer running over through the company so they were very active between them but once the offer was end these customers disappeared now your task 
और एज अ मार्केटिंग डिपार्टमेंट मार्केटिंग रिप्रेजेंटेटिव योर गोल वुड बी टू गो बैक एंड कॉल देम बैक ओके सो फर्स्ट इंफॉर्मेशन आई मीन यू कैन फिल्टर आउट दिस कस्टमर्स बेस्ड ऑन मल्टीपल क्राइटेरिया वन क्राइटेरिया कुड बी दिस वन which we are trying to imitate uh, based on the date gap between first and last order and also you you have to make sure these orders are matching with your offer dates um, or offer durations so once you get this right um, you have to just give this information share this information with your marketing team and then it will be left up to them uh, to strategize how they would want to get them back you know see you can understand how significant this sort of activities are from a company point of view if 80% of their customer appeared between an offer time that means there is something in that offer which this customers were looking for but in other regular days or in in regular sales this company is not able to uh, imitate or replicate the same uh, offer so one way is you you know um, if you really don't really know what the change you did the best thing that marketing team can approach is send them this people um some sort of form asking them what did you like what you disliked what suggestion you have and they can analyze that data further and based on the feedback they can get to know oh what mistake they have in making in the regular days of sales and then accordingly then they try to correct that part and then send as an offer again to this 80% of the customers and imagine out of that 80% even 1% comes back based on that promotion that is always a gain for the company compared to any other one right so it is important uh, whenever you are also working on any data if you are not sure what how what's the bigger picture of that how that's been going to help the organization do ask i would recommend do ask your manager or your client do ask trust me given that you understand the bigger picture you will always try to look for or uh, synthesize hypotheses which may nobody would have even thought of and most of the times those sort of hypotheses those sort of data insights proves to be very very crucial in advancing any product or marketing any product hopefully this gives you an idea about the significance of this sort of activities now let's see how we can achieve these activities without using loop on data frame right so now my task is to basically find the difference of this row and this row value for this customer like that i have to do for every other customers how am i going to do should i run through uh, are you, uh, you you see i have to find this and this so one is in uh, some some other row the other is another row and i need to take the difference of course to take one way you must be thinking is loop through loop through every row pick up the data or what about uh, basically or for every customer get the minimum and maximum date and then take the difference store in a variable and then do it no don't do all of this let's quickly try through data frame propagation properties so i'm going to do this first point first always make sure your data types are correctly type casted here date or order date is of object type which i don't want so let me quickly convert it to a proper suitable type so pd.2 underscore date time and then you have to give your data frame dot order date and i'm overriding it that okay and then quickly we'll check once more if our type is type casted well yes it is great let's quickly now do next my task is to find first step i'm going to get first order date by every customer every customer every customer would have some first order date right so you don't have to do just for one customer but for everyone and how am i going to do that so df dot group it's a group level operation i can do that so group by 
customer IDs. And then on which column do I want to do this operation? Uh, I want to do it on order date. So let me quickly add it here. And uh, then I, okay, I would prefer here transform rather than creating a new object um, group level. And then again, doing the merging merge part, which is a bit tedious. Rather, I choose transform transform method and directly I'll be able to add this information as a new column to my existing data frame. So if you are not sure how transform works, do watch, uh, I'll leave a uh, video on this to understand how aggregate operations, group level aggregations are different from group level transformation. By the way, this is very powerful function. This, there could, there could be one question in your interview around transform application. And if you can identify that and solve it, your interviewer will be very impressive. He'll be convinced that you know uh, pandas as a package and data frame manipulation very well. It's not that easy. All right. Let's quickly check now. So I want first order I said, right? Sorry, first uh, date. So that's mean. You see, so these are the dates for every customer. You right. The first customer firstly placed order in uh, July 19, 2021. Let me quickly save that. So I'm saving it as first order date. I know this is my first order date for all of my uh, customers. Now, in next, next step, I have to find last order date. Get last order date for every customer. How can I do that? Similar way, group by. I want to group it on customer ID. So, and on which column do you want to do this operation? So I want to do it on order date. Then again, transform. And then I'm calling max. And uh, that should, this represents the date of uh, on which the last order was placed for all this customer. Now, again, if you see for the first record, it is the same date as that of the first date because we already saw that's because the data is so like so. You can validate it. Don't worry. Um, You can always cross val validate with one example or two examples or with all the corner cases, right? Let me call it last order date. There it is. Now, quickly, let's check our data once more. And then it goes. If we want, we can again check it with respect to this particular customer so that we'll know uh, how it looks like and how we were expecting. So you remember, see that we said this particular customer had the last order in November 10. And that's why the last order date is November 10 in every row. Yes, you need to have it in every row. You can't keep few rows occupied other blank or none. It will just make your life complex. Don't do that. And the first order was in uh, 24th of January 2021. And that's why you see the first date is here. What about the remaining date? We don't need them. We can discard them. So those are all discarded. Now, it is interesting. Let's quickly check through this object once more. And again, this sort of information is available for every customer. So we'll focus on this customer first. You see, in one row, I have my first date and then I have a last date, which I wanted. Now, what if I take the difference between these two date, like difference between any two scalar number, wouldn't that be easy? Yes, it will be. And that's what we wanted. And this is called vector pro properties uh, that's supported by data frame or in, rather it's uh, there's something called propagation concept that's supported. And that's how data frame is very, very powerful. So let's quickly find the days, uh, date, uh, days difference. And that should be the answer for us. So now my next step, which is a step three, is find days difference or difference of time in days. So what should I do for that? df dot 
last order date minus df dot first order date. That is the difference. And you, if you clear correctly remember, okay, let me once display it again for you if you don't remember. For my first customer, as I said, in the data frame, in the order or sequence of their order, there are just three records and all dates are same. The first date and last date is same. Now you might, might be wondering, okay, in that case, why we have multiple orders, uh, multiple entries? That's because uh, it's possible and it happens like sometimes we go to, let's say, big baskets anywhere or more and you buy uh, your list of items. And once you're, you are built, then you realize, oh, you need a very important thing else. So you go again, get that item, get it built. So on the same day, you can have two bills, right? So but for both those bills, if you never ever noticed, will have unique bill number and that's how it is but in this case anyway it's same uh that's because data has some redundancy let's not get into that what is important is see at least for one record we have different uh, amount that means this data is at product level anyway coming back to our focus of this video so you have now this difference now you need to save it i'm just saving this way df dot days or you can also say date diff in days either is fine and that's our data we got it a, a column now if you have any such requirement of finding out certain customer ids uh, based on this number of days if you really quickly want to have a look of this how many days we have what are the rest of the data looking like you can do this so here are those you see there's a zero value then one three eight two four and then seven 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 six it's it's huge i mean there are many customers who who placed a uh, I mean, the gap between first and last order is of many years. Of course, it's it's not that readable uh, to discuss this information in terms of days. How about if we convert them into weeks or in terms of month? That should be better. Let's quickly try to convert in weeks and month and see if we get some good readable form of data. So here it goes. If you really want some other transformation, let's say first months, or let me also make it weeks. This the formula that I'm going to use may not be mm, very much accurate, uh, but we can assume it's accurate. You know, how do you get the weeks from days? Just dividing by seven. And how do you get a month by days? Dividing by 12. And let's see the data again. So here we have okay uh if you see the this here we have two days of difference but in uh it's already two weeks of difference yes it's it's um it's confusing to see day, days over there but we can correct that for sure but you have to read this way this is two weeks difference 16 days which makes sense right 16 days is equivalent to two point some weeks i have discarded the fraction part um or rather i let me try And this is one one day, which is again a uh, very confusing, misleading. It cannot be one day. Hmm. It should be three hundred sixty five days. Which is zero year. Makes sense. Yeah. Let me quickly check in terms of weeks how many values we have, and we have. Oh, such a huge numbers. What do you think? Why it's such a huge numbers we got it? Any idea? Because I'll tell you. That's because your data is not uh unique, does mostly works on string int flow data. But what you see is a time delta or time date data. If you try to call unique on that, it will be quite confusing. You see, it basically those bigger number, what you were saying, that's because of this time information added together. Uh, doing a lot of manipulation so the good is as i 
have shared in the previous video, do transformation of your date type to integer first. Get convert your date date difference in days to integer, then compute weeks and month out of it, and then your information will be more accurate and readable. Form. So I'm leaving that up to you to try out. Um, and then let me know how was. Uh, this particular information was it useful for you or not uh do watch the rest of the videos it's more informative um i'm sure for you and do subscribe the channel for the next video which is going to be very very useful uh, uh, and of course a very uh, comprehensive manipulation that you can achieve with data frame very easily and uh, so till then you have a happy learning and uh, enjoy watching the videos